Okay, quite a common issue I see when people are planning projects, and especially when they're costing projects, is, well, that was a funny noise, the issue of life cycle costing. So most people, when they approach project management, they have this very short-sighted view of, look, the project and thereby the cost are hinged on getting it done. Cool. So we spend all this money and then it's done and now we're sweet. What I find the issue is that often not much consideration has been put past that point. And, and there's a lot of things to consider. So number one is who's going to own that stuff? All right. Who's going to get the benefits? Who's going to maintain it? No one can spell maintain, not just me. Um, and who's going to pay for it? So there's a lot of questions that need to be asked. And often they're not asked or answered until after the project's been completed. And sometimes it becomes a bit of a handball. Look, no, nah, your thing, now you pay for it, you deal with it. Or no one takes ownership and the great work we've done and all that capital expenditure just seems to be worthless. So what I advocate is to get all this stuff right here, especially before we make a decision. So to consider all these things in our decision making, whether we give the project go ahead or not. Very quick example for life cycle costing, and I'll just use on who's going to pay for it, for instance. Let's say our project was to buy a car. All right, so we do some research, we go in the market, we do some negotiations, we do some stuff and we end up with a car. Cool. And the total cost of that project has been $20,000. Perfect, cool. Let's say that's all we had in our bank forever, $20,000 we would be able to drive it for 500 k's, assuming it had a full tank of fuel. Then what? We can't manage the asset. We can't get any more benefits out of it because we can't put any fuel in it. Or if it breaks down, what are we gonna do? So it's really good to consider these life cycle costings. So you might say, look, in the first year of having this asset, what are the things we need to pay for? All right, so we've got fuel at $10,000. We've got um, repairs and maintenance at 5,000. We've got, and that could include things like tires and, and things like that. We've got insurances. That sounds like a legitimate expense. Um, what else could we have? Stuff. I'm just going to call this stuff. And then we've got stuff. All right, so other stuff, inc incidentals and so on. So in the first year, we've got $17,000 of additional spent just to keep this thing going, to keep getting the ongoing benefits, which is you know commuting in this case. Um, we've also got depreciation, which I guess is actually part of the total cost of ownership because let's say we spend it here, every year our asset is actually worth less and less and less. So let's say we can even add on $10,000 here for depreciation the first year. Right. It's a bit harsh, but it makes the maths easy. Right. So you can say, look, in the first year, this asset has cost us $27,000. No. A book value of 10, cool, but it's actually cost us $17,000 to maintain it. And if we have to spend that every single year, all right, and we own this asset for, I'm just going to say 10 years because it's going to make our mass easy, that's us spending just on running that asset, the extra costs, $170,000 over 10 years. Then we consider the you know, the book value, the loss, the appreciation, which after 10 years, I mean, often vehicles are written off after seven years from a tax perspective. So you might say, look, and then we've got something with zero residual value. So after seven years, we might need to replace it. Who's going to replace it? <laughs> Who's going to do that? This is a question I'm asking you because this stuff needs to be answered here. So please, do not go past this point in project selection before understanding all of these things. How I normally tackle it is I look at the useful life of the asset. How long are we going to be able to use this for? Then I'll calculate the life cycle costing. Then I make sure that you know we've actually got a budget to pay for this stuff. So every year we've actually got access to 17k. Then when the useful life is over or the contract is over, whatever the, the deal is, I say, do we have enough funds you know, put away to get a new car off that point. 
Also, I, I try and work out who's going to get those benefits, who's going to get to use the car. Generally, those two are linked, but not always. Also, who's going to maintain it? Who's going to actually drive it to get service? Who's going to deal with all that sort of stuff? The non-financial maintenance stuff. Who's going to deal with the support calls? Who's going to deal with that? Um, and who takes ownership of it? So who owns the residual value of the asset over time? So there's some of the considerations. So when you're starting a project or when you're considering doing something and spending money, don't just consider the acquisition costs. Because as you can see, the acquisition costs may actually be quite a lot smaller than the life cycle costs, especially over a longer term.